However, the theoretical foundations of a Higgs boson bomb encounter substantial challenges. The manipulation of the Higgs field on the scale necessary for such an endeavor represents the cutting edge of particle accelerator technology. Yet it operates on a minuscule scale compared to what would be required for a Higgs boson bomb. They said, Sadhguru, if you can give a mathematical backbone to what you're talking, this is Nobel Prize stuff. Can you give a mathematical background? I said, I'll never bother about the mathematics. It's true for me and it's… it has transformed everything that I am because it's true for me. I don't wish to work equations for that. And anyway, Nobel Prize wouldn't mean anything to me, I would be too embarrassed by such things. Before we talk about the Higgs boson bomb, let's first watch Sadhguru's video. So, there are… because this is a dialectical culture, the same science has been expressed in story forms. I… I cannot go into the whole story, it's a long story. But when I told this story to one of the top scientists in the world, when I was speaking to him and I explained this, see, this is how it is, this is the nature of the existence. This is from the yogic lore, but we are always told not to believe the lore till it becomes a reality in your experience. And this is the reality in my experience. If you go like this, this is what will happen. So when I spoke to this very top-level scientist who's a Nobel laureate and uh, I was telling him that this is what it is. There was a group of them and when I explained this is how it is within me, what do you think? They said, Sadhguru, if you can give a mathematical backbone to what you're talking, this is Nobel Prize stuff. Can you give a mathematical background? I said, I'll never bother about the mathematics. It's true for me and it's… it has transformed everything that I am because it's true for me. Everything that I ever was changed simply because I touched this dimension within me. I don't wish to work equations for that. And anyway, Nobel Prize wouldn't mean anything to me, I would be too embarrassed by such things. So. This story, I will… because I will make it so brief, there could be holes in it. If I make it elaborate enough, there will be no holes in the story, it's a perfect theory. And we have proved it within ourselves that it is true. But you want to build a ten billion dollar instrument under the ground, to prove the same thing, it's up to you. This can be experientially proved within yourself if you are willing to go into the depths of what this is. Because this is made exactly the same way the whole universe is made. If you go deep enough into this and you know how this is made, by inference you know how everything in the universe is made. By inference. And even now, science is also only inferring. Today modern science has admitted that it's an ever-expanding universe or an endless universe. Rather, ever-expanding is a yogic term, they are calling it an endless universe. If it's an endless universe, trying to travel across the universe and find out the nature of the universe is untenable, isn't it? Simply out of question. The only way you could know the nature of the universe, nature of the creation and the source of creation is by going inward because whatever you ate in the morning, whether it's a idli or a dosa or a banana, has been transformed into a human being in the last few hours. Nobody else can do this except the source of creation. 
So if the source of creation is right here, if you want to know anything about creation, isn't it the best place to consult? If you want to know anything about creation, isn't the source of creation the best place to consult? And if you had to go to heaven for this, you could give it up. If it is right here, why don't you consult? Simply because you too enamored by your own thought. You think you are going to capture the whole universe with your thoughts. It is a foolish way to approach. The only reason why science has survived is because of technology. It keeps throwing out technologies. If no technologies were coming out of science, they were just talking about all the things that they have been talking, people would have beaten them down for the money that they spent. And it's happened in the past when there were no techno technologies and people just spoke science, they were beaten down, isn't it? So science has its value in terms of utility, but science cannot open up the existence for human experience, it will not, it can never do it because they are going with intellect. Intellect as an instrument works only to dissect. The only way intellect can approach anything is to break it up and see. If you ask a scientist to find out something about this flower, first thing is he will break it up into pieces. I think I should ask a scientist to make me understand one of you. He will talk about dissecting you then. If you break this up, you may know many parts of this. You may know the structure of it, you may know the chemistry of it, but you will not know the beauty of it. You will not know the completeness of it because the flower is an expression of a plant finding its fulfillment. It is the highest thing for the plant. For its life, this is the highest happening. It's the flowering of that life. You will not know that. You will not see the hand of the creator in this if you break it up. But as a whole, if you are willing to pay attention, absolute attention, if in your approach, you make this flower more important than yourself and keep your focus on it, you will see the whole universe in this. If you break it up, you will have petals, you will have other parts of the flower and you will come to vulgar conclusions and then you will learn how to make use of it. So right now, unfortunately, our approach, what we call a science has become like this, how to use everything in the universe for our benefit. If a tiger comes down from the mountain, looks at you, he will think, wow, dinner. You look at a tree and you think, wood. It's all right for a tri tiger to do that because that's all he knows. But it's not all right for you to do that, isn't it? But right now, that is all science has become. Anything we see, how to make use of it. Anything we see, how to make use of it. Even an invisible atom, we won't leave. Even the goddamn boson. Already people are talking about in how many ways it could be used. We could make a boson bomb. You understand? If we make a boson bomb, all of you will just vanish. We don't even have to deal with your dead bodies. Yes because you'll cease to exist just like the boson. Instead of shooting you dead or burning you to death, if we make all the protons in your body collide with each other, you'll just vanish. You want the technology? But they will tell you, no, 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 it could… there could be medical uses to it, we could do this, we could do that, yes, I know all that. But just the idea, it doesn't matter what, 
you cannot look at anything without thinking in what way can I make use of it is a very crass way to exist. With this level of existence, you will have everything and you will have nothing. This is modern life. People have everything like never before and they got nothing in their lives. Nothing that you can call of any worth. People who have everything and cannot feel life in any significant way, when they die or when the moment of death comes, they will see that they spent this whatever number of years without living a moment because what can I get, what can I get is a sure way not to live because from what you get you can only make a living. It's only by what you give that you make a life. So giving does not mean money or something else or something else. It is just that this moment if you look at this tree, how totally you can give yourself to this tree. That is how intensely you know life. If you sit here and calculate what can I get out of this tree, you will completely miss life, completely. Life will evade you. So this kind of science which denies you life should be restricted if you ask me. I know I'm going to be hugely unpopular because somebody is going to a Twitter and say, Sadhguru says science should be curtailed. <laughs> it's all right. I'm telling you, a science which is driven just by what can I get out of it needs to be controlled a bit. Otherwise, human beings will have everything and they'll have nothing. When that is your experience, then you will destroy everything. Today, the planet is not being destroyed because of something else. It is just unbridled use of technology, isn't it? It could have been used for our well-being, but it's working against us because we have not worked the other dimensions of life. We are just going with this, what can I get, what can I get? If you go with this, there will be no planet left after some time. But even if the planet is left, suppose we rope in another ten planets, still it will not be enough. We will still have nothing will have everything. This is my experience. Science should have been just a quest to know, not to exploit the creation. It is just a longing to know. Human longing to know wants to find expression in every possible way. Physical sciences is one of the ways, perfectly fine. But once it starts serving the masters who sponsor it, then if businesses sponsor it, they are looking for profit from it. If nations sponsor it, they are looking how to make more powerful weapons out of it all the time. You must understand this, the cutting edge science always first becomes cutting edge military technology. Only after that it comes down to other uses. How many lives has it taken? How many more do we want to take? That's a question. So, this goddamn particle, one good thing it's done is, the whole world is thinking particle physics. I like that <laughs> That's nice. But do you know the boson is named after Satyendranath Bose? You know this? No? It's an Indian mathematician a self-taught mathematician. As Albert Einstein acknowledged, he said, the Western sciences couldn't take a single step without the Indian mathematicians. The fundamentals of mathematics came from the East. But always here, the other ethos of the culture said, you should not do anything that's exploitative to nature because nature was seen as mother nature. You don't go about raping mother nature. You take only what you need, nothing more. Because of that attitude, this science was not converted into technology and that is the wisest way to handle science. Just as a quest, a tool, a way to know and nothing beyond that and technology 
must be really controlled. What is absolutely needed, that's all that should be done. This unbridled usage, already people are talking how to use the boson that they have not seen. When we can use the atom that we have not seen. So it doesn't matter what you see, you are thinking of how to use it. This attitude unfortunately has been further fueled by the attitude of science. This need to be checked, otherwise it will be our nemesis. It will for sure be a goddamn everything <laughs> Let's dwell deeper into the fascinating world of Higgs boson and its significance in the tapestry of particle physics. The discovery of the Higgs boson in 2012 marked a historic moment in the pursuit of understanding the fundamental nature of our universe. The standard model of particle physics is a theoretical framework that elegantly describes the known elementary particles and their interactions. However, it faced a lingering question, why do particles have mass? This question led to the formulation of Higgs mechanism and postulation of the Higgs field. According to the Higgs mechanism, space is permeated by ubiquitous energy field known as Higgs field. It is an invisible omnipresent force that imparts mass to particles as they interact with it. Picture the Higgs field as a vast cosmic ocean and the particles as swimmers moving through it. The degree to which these particles interact with the Higgs field determines their mass. Particles that interact strongly acquire more mass, while those with weaker interactions possess less mass. Enter the Higgs boson, the particle associated with the fluctuations or vibrations in the Higgs field. When particles move through this field, they can create ripples analogous to the waves in the cosmic ocean. These ripples manifest as the Higgs boson, and its discovery at CERN confirmed the existence of the Higgs field providing a crucial piece of the puzzle in understanding the origin of the mass. The detection of the Higgs boson was a monumental achievement facilitated by the Large Hadron Collider, the most powerful particle accelerator ever constructed. The LHC allowed scientists to accelerate protons to nearly the speed of light and collide them, creating conditions similar to high energy environment shortly after the Big Bang. The experiments at the LHC involved massive detectors such as ATLAS and CMS, meticulously designed to identify and measure the particles resulting from these collisions. The distinctive decay signatures of the Higgs boson were among the many signals sought in the data generated by these experiments. The Higgs boson is a fleeting particle with an extremely short lifespan. Its discovery relied on detecting the particles it decays into rather than directly observing the Higgs itself. The observation of these decay products such as photons or pairs of W and Z bosons provided the experimental evidence needed to confirm the existence of the Higgs boson. The discovery of the Higgs boson not only validated the theoretical framework of the standard model but also opened new avenues for exploration. It solidified our understanding of the role the Higgs field plays in the universe and how particles acquire mass. However, it also exposed the limitations of the standard model as it does not account for dark matter, dark energy or gravity on a quantum scale. Moreover, the mass of the Higgs boson itself, a fundamental parameter, raised intriguing questions. Its mass is sensitive to quantum fluctuations in the Higgs field, which could potentially be influenced by physics beyond the standard model. As scientists continue to probe the mysteries of the universe, understanding the properties of the Higgs boson and its implication for physics beyond the standard model remains a pivotal focus. One of the tantalizing possibilities is the existence of additional Higgs boson or exotic particles yet to be discovered. Some theories propose the presence of a family of Higgs particles with different masses and properties, offering a rich tapestry of particle physics that extends beyond the currently established framework. To dwell further into the hypothetical scenario of a Higgs boson bomb, let's consider the fundamental principles and challenges associated with such a concept. Firstly, the Higgs boson bomb relies on the manipulation of the Higgs field, an invisible energy field that permeates space and endows particles with mass. Theoretically, by inducing a controlled collapse of the Higgs field, one could release an enormous amount of energy. The equation E equals mc squared, which expresses the equivalence of E and mass, underscores the potential for a Higgs boson bomb to convert a substantial portion of mass into an unprecedented amount of energy. 
However, the theoretical foundations of a Higgs boson bomb encounter substantial challenges. The manipulation of the Higgs field on the scale necessary for such an endeavor represents the cutting edge of particle accelerator technology. Yet it operates on a minuscule scale compared to what would be required for a Higgs boson bomb. Developing the technology to control and manipulate the Higgs field on a larger scale poses monumental engineering and scientific challenges. Moreover, the ethical implications of developing a Higgs boson bomb are profound and merit careful consideration. The potential for such immense power raises questions about global security, the responsible use of scientific knowledge and the consequence of misuse. The history of scientific advancements, particularly in the field of physics, highlights the need for ethical framework to guide the development and application of powerful technologies. The weaponization of scientific discoveries as witnessed with nuclear weapons to establish treaties, regulations and ethical guidelines to prevent the misuse of such technologies. The hypothetical nature of a Higgs boson bomb underscore the importance of primitive ethical discussions and the establishment of a global consensus on the responsible exploration of such theoretical concepts. In summary, the Higgs boson stands as a cornerstone in our understanding of the subatomic world. Its discovery at the LHC not only confirmed the existence of the Higgs field but also provided a deeper comprehension of how particles acquire mass. As scientists continue to explore the mysteries of the universe, the Higgs boson remains a beacon guiding us towards new realm of discovery and advancing our understanding of the fundamental forces that govern the cosmos.